Welcome uh, to everyone this morning. I actually can't get the YouTube uh, started, unfortunately. I'm not really sure what's wrong with that, but, but um, it'll be recorded so, so we can post it later on in any case. Uh, so it's great to have you with us and, and uh, joining us for this, for this uh, beautiful second Sunday after Pentecost. Our readers today are Don DeKemper and Denise Mallon. Um, and uh, Amy Walsh is the responder this morning. So we invite you to stay on mute, but uh, respond at the appropriate times. And of course, sing out with our choir as they're leading us in our music this morning. We will begin on the, the front page of our leaflet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty God, source of all that is, giver of every good gift, you create all people in your image and call us to love one another as you love us. We confess that we have failed to honor you in the great diversity of the human family. We have desired to live in freedom while building walls between ourselves and others. We have longed to be known and accepted for who we are while making judgments of others based on the color of skin or the shape of features or the varieties of human experience. We have tried to love our neighbors individually while yet benefiting from systems that hold those same neighbors in oppression. Forgive us, holy God. Give us eyes to see you as you are revealed in all people. Strengthen us for the work of reconciliation rooted in love. Restore us in your image to be beloved community, united in our diversity, even as you are one with Christ and the Spirit holy and undivided trinity, now and forever. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord is our light and our life. Oh, come, let us worship. Yeah. 
116, 1, 10 through 17. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious is the sight of the Lord, is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson is from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the terebinths of Mamre as he was sitting at the opening of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing over against him. On seeing them, he hurried from his tent door to meet them. Bowing low, he said, sirs, if I have deserved your favor, do not go past your servant without a visit. Let me send for some water that you may bathe your feet and rest under this tree while I fetch a little food so that you may refresh yourselves. Afterwards, you may continue on the journey which has brought you my way. They said, very well, do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, quick, take three measures of flour, knead it and make cakes. He then hastened to the herd, chose a fine tender calf and gave it to a servant who prepared it at once. He took curds and milk in the calf, which was now ready and set it all before them and there under the tree waited on them himself while they ate. They asked him where Sarah, his wife was, and he replied, she is in the tent. One of them said, about this time next year, I shall come back to you and your wife, Sarah, will have a son. Now, Sarah was listening at the opening of the tent close by him. Both Abraham and Sarah were very old, Sarah being well past the age of childbearing. So she laughed and said to herself, at my time of life, I am past bearing children and my husband is old. The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, can I really bear a child now that I am so old? Is anything impossible for the Lord? In due season, at this time next year, I shall come back to you and Sarah will have a son. 
Because she was frightened, Sarah lied and denied that she had laughed. But he said, yes, you did laugh. The Lord showed favor to Sarah as he had promised and made good what he had said about her. She conceived and at the time foretold by God, she bore a son to Abraham in his old age. The son whom Sarah bore to him, Abraham named Isaac. And when Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as decreed by God. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born. Sarah said, God has given me good reason to laugh and everyone who hears will laugh with me. She added, whoever would have told Abraham that Sarah would suckle children, yet I have borne him a son in his old age. Here ends the lesson. The second lesson from the book of Romans. Therefore, now that we have just that we have been justified through faith, we are at peace uh, with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to that grace in which we now live. And we will exult in the hope of the divine glory that is to be ours. More than this, we even exult in endurance, endurance of approval and approval of hope. Such hope is no fantasy. Through the Holy Spirit he has given us, God's love has flooded our hearts. It was while we were still helpless that at the appointed time, Christ died for the wicked. Even for a just man, one of us would hardly die, though perhaps for a good man, one might actually brave death. But Christ died for us while we were yet, while we were yet sinners, and that is God's proof of his love towards us. Blessed be the God of Israel, who comes to set us free. He visits and Blessed be the God of Israel, who comes to set us free. He visits and redeems us, he grants us liberty. The prophet spoke of mercy, of freedom and release. God shall fulfill his 
Savior comes among us to raise us up to him. Before him goes his herald, forerunner in the way, the prophet of salvation, the harbinger of day. All prisoners of darkness, the sun begins to rise. The dawning of forgiveness upon the sinner's eyes. He guides the feet of pilgrims along the paths of peace. Oh, bless our God and Savior with songs that never cease. The third lesson is from the Gospel of St. Matthew. So Jesus went round all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every kind of illness and infirmity. The sights of the crowds moved him to pity. They were like sheep without a shepherd, harassed and helpless. Then he said to his disciples, the crop is heavy, but the laborers are too few you must ask the owner to send laborers to bring in the harvest. Then he called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out all clean, unclean spirits and to cure every kind of illness and infirmity. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, the man who betrayed him. These 12 sent Jesus, these 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not take the road to gentle lands and do not enter any Samaritan town but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the message, the kingdom of heaven is upon you. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, drive out demons. You received without cost, give without charge. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning, we are starting again, commencing, if you will. The feast days are done. Easter celebrations, Pentecost, and even that less than rousing day, Trinity Sunday, are behind us. And so now we settle in to the long and sometimes tedious ordinary time, as we call it the green season after Pentecost. You all can't see it, but here in the church, the hangings are green once more. We keep up with the hangings, even though, even though you're not uh, in church, we want it to be right. And they will be green until Advent, with just a couple special days thrown in along the way. As I was thinking about this, I realized that uh, it kind of feels like Kermit the Frog's signature time was written for this season. It's not that easy being green, having to spend each day the color of the leaves, when I think it could be so much nicer being red or yellow or gold or something much more colorful like that. Maybe Kermit is an Episcopalian. But then he continues. But green is the color of spring. And green can be cool and friendly-like. And green can be big like an ocean, or important like a mountain, or tall like a tree. 
If you like to watch videos, one that I would absolutely recommend is the fabulous Lena Horne singing, It's Not Easy Being Green. There are two versions, one of her alone, which is really spectacular, and then one of her with Kermit, which I remember from Sesame Street when I was a kid, and maybe some others among us do as well. Either is inspiring and well worth your time. And you get the sense that Miss Horn is interpreting this song to be about the Black experience in America, her experience in America. But really, it could be about any experience. So I encourage you to watch. And as we hear from Kermit and Lena, as we hear from Kermit and Lena, while it's ordinary, green can also be cool and friendly like, or important, or tall. Because green is the color of growth and life. And so this new season is all about growing up. It's about taking up our call. It's about being disciples, doing the work we need to do once the parties and the flashy sparkles are over. In this morning's gospel, we are reintroduced to all 12 of the disciples. In fact, they are called apostles because they are not just followers or listeners. They're not just learners, but they are sent forth. I've said before that in all likelihood, they were a lot younger than we realize, than we typically imagine. Probably still in their teens or in their 20s, much like our graduates today. We get that sense because with the exception of Peter, they seem not to have married yet, nor do they carry the weight of family responsibility. They are able to leave their day jobs as fishermen, as a tax collector, as a zealot, whatever they did, in order to follow a new call and a new life with Jesus in the service of God. And what always strikes me is the fact that these 12 young men are entrusted, empowered, with the same gifts and skills that Jesus had. Did you notice that? As he sends them out, Jesus says to them, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, drive out demons. These are all skills. <laughs> that we imagine are reserved to supernatural people, people like Jesus. But these guys aren't supernatural. They're just, well, guys, people like us, but people who have been given skills and power and trust. And of course we know, because we've read the gospels, that they make mistakes all the time. They were not perfect, but Jesus never gives up on them. He never tells them that their mistakes or their misunderstandings are too many or that their skills are too unhoned. He just offers more teaching and more chances. We are here today because of those 12 young men, because of their faith, because of their skills, also because of their mistakes and their misunderstandings. It's astounding when you think about it, that the church as we know it today is a result of Jesus and those 12 guys that he entrusted with the work of teaching and healing, offering hope, and bringing new life. Of course, there were more than just them. There were many women too and many who couldn't just leave everything, their work and their family, but who were committed to the faith that Jesus offered. This weekend, we are celebrating the many graduates in our church family. They range from graduating from elementary school to graduate school. And like the apostles we meet in this morning's gospel passage, 
they too are being sent out to do much the same kinds of things, to heal, to teach, to bring compassion, to bring new insights and new life. Like the 12 apostles, they may not feel ready or prepared to take those next steps. I've graduated four times, and rarely do I have I felt ready. It can be frightening to leave the comforts of what we know. But often, once you take those steps and go forth, you discover that you have exactly what you need. Not just the knowledge or the learning, which is always growing and changing and evolving. You can and always should learn more. And the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. <laughs> Rather, you discover that you have what you need in your heart and in your soul. The inner strength and courage to confront new problems and to create new solutions. And most especially, the power within yourself to bring new life. Our 11 Emmanuel graduates this year are such interesting, fantastic, diverse people. Some love science, some love business, others theater, language, and the arts. One is planning to be an architect, and some are just beginning to figure out what path their life will take and what subjects will light a spark of interest in their hearts and souls. And you know what? It was the same for those apostles 2,000 years ago. Some were fishermen. Matthew was a rather unpopular tax collector. That's about the worst thing you could have been in first century society. While Simon was a zealot, which is sort of the exact opposite of a tax collector. He wanted to overthrow the system rather than support it. Jesus needed all of them to fulfill his mission. And we need all of our graduates today. Not necessarily to support Emmanuel, though we will always be here as their church home, a place in which they were baptized and prepared for confirmation and grew up and accoladed and made friends and served their neighbors and more. But we need them for more than that. We need them to help us and to help Jesus to proclaim to the people of the world, the kingdom of heaven is upon you. Wherever they go, wherever we go, that is the message for a world that is hurting so badly, a world that is so painful and so broken and yet so loved. The kingdom of heaven is upon you. So graduates, take that word with you into the world. Share it, shout it, sing it, act it, even build it. Most especially, help us all to believe it. While many of us are weighed down by the mistakes and the prejudices of the past, like the apostles, as our apostles, and as Christ's apostles today being set forth, you are free to offer us and the world a whole new vision. We need you to cast out the demons, demons of racism that still hold us in bondage. We need you to heal broken hearts and broken bodies. We need you to figure out how we can end hunger and homelessness and heal the environment. We need you to help us to see who and what we can be, who and what God wants us to be. And as Jesus says, always remember this, you received without cost, give without charge. In other words, 
love freely, just as you have been loved. Heal freely, just as you have been healed. Give freely, so that we can see and know God's way. It's not that easy being green. But if it leads to the new life of the kingdom of heaven, well then, I think it's what I want to be. And maybe you do too. To God be the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O Lord, keep your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we have a special anthem this morning, uh, which was uh, recorded here at Emmanuel, but it was uh, done a while ago. Um, of the Expressions of Faith Gospel Choir from St. James Episcopal Church in Baltimore. And um, it seemed a really appropriate one for today as we celebrate our graduates as a charge for them.
I want to thank Carl Wickstrom for uh, making that uh, recording a number of years ago when uh, the Expressions of Faith Choir was with us. It was seemed today seemed like the perfect day to uh, relive that and have it be a charge to us all and especially to our graduates. We now turn our hearts to prayer. We offer prayers for those in need, especially Arthur, Bruna, Samantha Carter, Gwen Chambers, Cheryl, Kevin Concannon, Jane Dubler, David Fieldhouse, Mark Gallagher, Sydney Gash, Gianna, Kathleen Holland, JC, JD, John, Samantha Nibbs, Colleen Kaneski, George Lloyd, Sandy McGee, Maggie, Pilar and Angel Marta, Jack McTie, Dick Moody, Michael, Ginny Moyer, Vicki Ullman, Jim O'Reilly, Lisa Pappas, John Ross, Margaret Skelly, Brian Smith, Fran Sorensen, Roberta Sullivan, Laurel Wexler-Dale, and Carl Wickstrom. We pray for our graduates, for Marissa Adams, Elizabeth Chappett, Thomas Chappett, Martha Di Natale, Sean Di Giambattista, Jillian Morell, Tess Nash McIsaac, John Peterson, Morgan Peterson, Emily Sheeran, and Ian Wallace. May God's blessing be upon them all. O loving God, we commend to your gracious keeping all who are near and dear to us. Have mercy upon those who are sick and comfort all who are in pain, anxiety, or sorrow. Awaken all who are careless about eternal things. Bless those who are young and in health, that they may give the days of their strength unto you. Comfort the aged and infirm, that your peace may rest upon them. Hallow the ties of kindred, that we may help and not hinder one another and all such good works as you have prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for doctors and nurses. O Lord Jesus Christ, who has power over life and death, over health and sickness, give skill, wisdom, and gentleness to doctors and nurses and all who minister to the sick, that always bearing your presence with them, they may not only heal but bless and shine as lamps of hope in the darkest hours of distress and fear, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, world without end. Amen. We pray for social justice. Almighty God, who has created us in your own image, grant us grace fearlessly to contend against evil and to make no peace with oppression, and that we may reverently use our freedom, help us to employ it in the maintenance of justice among people and nations, for the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray for those who have died. Today, we remember especially Catherine Santorelli, in whose memory donations to our Bread of Life mission are given, and those you may wish to name now, silently or aloud. O Lord our God, from whom neither life nor death can separate those who trust in your love and whose love holds in its embrace your children in this world and in the next, so unite us to yourself that in fellowship with you we may always be united to our loved ones, whether here or there. Give us courage, constancy, and hope through him who died and was buried and rose again for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Thank you everyone for joining us today. And uh, thank you to our uh, families for sending in some of those fantastic photos. Um, they were great. And I, I know that Emily was here. Emily Sheeran is here. I don't know if other graduates are. I don't know, Emily, if you wanna say hi to us from, from uh, Canada, we'd love to uh, at least hear uh, a hello. I'm in Montreal right now. You're in Montreal, yeah. <laughs> um, How was it there? Uh, really great. Um, things are getting a lot better. Um, I only got back. I was in. I was staying with family for a while while things were kind of escalating. Um, but I'm back now, and uh, yeah, it's finally summer in Montreal. And summer in Montreal is one of the most uh, beautiful cities to be in. Um, during this time, so it's it's very nice to be here. That's great. Well, congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, I see that Gail wrote in the in the chat that Martha is here too, but she may not have sound. But uh, but uh, uh, congratulations, Martha. We are so super proud of you. And uh, I don't know, are there any other graduates actually on the call today? Well, it's it's great to, but I know families are anyway to to celebrate them, and they may be sleeping and uh, recovering from uh, graduating. Some of our Wakefield graduates actually graduated just yesterday, and more are graduating today from from the high school. So it's great. I want to thank um, our choir for the fantastic music today, and Mike um, for Doug for putting together the slideshow, Lisa Ventura for for um, putting together the the graduation uh, uh, folder. Uh, which is so beautiful and I think is a new tradition now, something we could have figured out a long time ago. And so some good things come out of this, out of this strange and crazy time. Um, and as I said, the video of the Expressions of Faith was recorded by Carl Wickstrom a number of years ago when the choir visited us in Boston and it was super fun to see and hear them again. Um, Holly is going to stay on and be our coffee hour host this morning. So Anyone who would like to um, stay on and uh, share in some, some time together. I'm going to turn the record off.